I'm Jusenia Arias. And this is my new norm. Give gave me. Excuse me. Bella, give me. My name is Ayana, and this is my new normal. When I was told that I would have to be taking my college classes from home, I was excited. I didn't have to wake up early and travel to school, and the good thing is I made my own schedule, so a lot of my classes were in the late afternoons until the first day of class. Between the bad internet connection and people forgetting to mute their mics, I just knew this was going to be a very interesting semester. I was distracted by the other people in my class and I was worried that my professor would hear or see me even though I had my mic muted and my camera off. All in all, I did surprisingly well in the semester. Next semester, I just need to pay more attention in class and pick a better spot in my house to sit in. My name is Brianna and this is my new normal. I can't forget my mask. Spent out my dog. My name is Akira Ramirez, new norms at my home. As soon as we come in, we take off our masks, spray everything from our clothes to shoes with Lysol. Here is the clothes that um, are used at home, and this is the clothes that are used outside. We buy so many masks. This part of my new normal when I have to wait for my child to get their school books and things ready for class. You guys got your mask and everything? Yeah. You got an extra one just in case you misplace your mask. So, they're off on my way to class now because it's one o'clock sociology class. My name is Crystal Davila and this is my new norm. Doing some work before the kids actually get up or before the sun comes up. But either way, I'm fine with it because my view just helps me out so much just picturing something else other than what I'm really doing so that I can get through what I have to do. Mommy has to use the bathroom and I continue doing my work in the bathroom but whenever I'm asked to come out because one of their teachers want to see me mom's in the bathroom she's still in the bathroom. Another part of the new norm for us in this family is having to play hide and seek. Hello, my name is Rudy and this is my new norm. When I had to attend and work and take classes from my room, I felt kind of weird because I was not used to taking classes this way. At the very beginning, I was not very motivated, but I had to get used to it. I also had to take classes from my living room and my bathroom, which is also strange. I'm really tired of these online classes, of, of, of taking classes online, because I it's been a while now, and I feel like it would be better if we, if we go back to what it used to be before. My name is Samantha Caceres, and this is my new normal. When I had to attend class from my kitchen table, I felt trapped being in class all day in my home. I felt lazier because I wasn't going out, traveling to school, exercising regularly, or even running for the bus just to be on time. I had to attend class at the same time my son does. And it was kind of hard for me to focus on my work and complete it on time, as well as must assist him with his work and ensure he concentrate and complete his work on time as well. So it's past midnight and this is the only time I get to have some physical activity. My name is Chris Mar Vargas and this is the new normal. The formal study of folklore began no more than 300 years ago in the 1700s. And really by the late 1800s, Folklore societies had formed around the world, including the American Folklore Society in 1888, which remains active to this day.
When people began to cheer every night 7 p.m. for our essential workers, it made me feel proud, happy, excited due to the fact that I am going to school to become a medical assistant. I myself, along with my family, took part at 7 p.m. as well in cheering and celebrating for our essential workers. It gave me a sense of pride, happiness, gratification to see how people are so appreciative, especially during this time we're all facing in the world today. Also knowing all their priorities, responsibilities they have with their own families, they still take the time risking helping people in our community. Their acts of selflessness, heroic love, kindness, sympathy, empathy, compassion, and comfort during this time is so rewarding. My name is Shaquille. This is my COVID story. As an essential worker, I felt a sense of pride in what I did. I am a delivery carrier, so with everything shut down, ordering from home became a huge go-to move. This pandemic was no joke for my coworkers and I. I am proud to be out there and make some sort of difference, no matter how small it may be. And uh, I would do it again if need be. I felt challenged throughout the entire pandemic. A challenge to deliver the packages safely, a challenge to keep myself from getting into contact with somebody who has the virus. When people chat at 7 p.m., it makes me happy because people are not only just sharing for their train for everyone, whether you're a delivery worker or a teacher, a janitor, a home provider, they're cheering for everyone. I needed two jobs to help with my family. We were unemployed. My mom was struggling to get her unemployment, so I needed the two jobs to help. I wasn't told that the majority of the people in my job, co-workers, caught COVID. I left my job for about two weeks because I was scared. One, I have a father who, even though he does not have cancer no more, I need to protect him. Being cheered at 7 p.m. in the afternoon um, actually felt very good. It, <laughs> the pants clicking together, woo, like that actually felt pretty good. Um, I am the only essential worker in my house, so hearing it made me feel like I was doing something great. COVID-19 started extremely spreading, um, that it was getting worse and they decided to shut everything down, but essential workers still had to make it to work. That was one of the most challenging things for me because I was afraid of my family and my daughter. When people cheer at 7 p.m. at night for essential workers, I feel very heartwarming and um, beautiful in a way. It makes you feel like at the same time with a little fear because you were waking up to head to work without noticing if you were gonna make it back home healthy and safe. So I felt like for us essential workers, it was very spirit lifting. When people cheered at 7 p.m. every night for essential workers, it made me feel proud. Proud that people showed how grateful they are for those putting their lives on the line to get those hospitalized individuals off of one. Proud that with all this uncertainty and death in the world that there was still some humanity left. Proud that we were displaying our gratitude and consideration for our essential employees. Imagine working double shifts or in areas you're not familiarized with while people are dying left and right and having a mental, physical, and emotional breakdown. Our essential staff face labor conditions like no one has ever experienced, and they deserve way more than just an applause and cheers. So when I cheered for them at 7 p.m., I was thinking of how courageous they were and I say thank you to the essential workers. I just want to take this time to give thanks to all the essential workers and all the healthcare workers for making many sacrifices of their time and effort to keeping us safe and helping those who need it most during this pandemic. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. After the lockdown and the large increase of COVID cases, we finally have a vaccine. Thank God. These vaccines are what the whole world has been waiting for. But now that we have them and they're available and ready for us all, people are reluctant. Either they want it, they don't want it, 
have mixed feelings about it, or they're creating these crazy conspiracy theories. Some of the comments made by individuals are ignorant, funny, and at the same time outrageous. People on social media joke that the vaccine is a chip being implanted in us. Others said that they'd rather wait for the first round of individuals to get them so that if anything goes wrong, they'll be okay. Yet, there were a few that were anti-vaccination, which I can understand. I just hope and pray that those who choose not to get it and those that do get it keep themselves and others around them safe by continuing to wear the mask and following COVID protocols. I think getting the COVID vaccine is completely up to you. I think that everybody should do, you know, their homework and look things up. For me personally, I'm not going to say 100% no, but I'm not going to say 100% yes either. I would rather wait till hundreds more people take it and then nothing happens to them and then I'll take the shot. What I think of the COVID vaccine. I feel many pros and cons. The pros are it can prevent us from spreading the virus and hopefully get us back to our normal life that we are all accustomed to. The cons, however, would be the vaccine just came out. We're all guinea pigs at this point. We don't really know what it has in store for us in the future with our health. When speaking to both my family and my friends, I get mixed feelings and emotions on the matter. My grandparents have received the vaccine along with my good friend who was a DOE employee. However, I also have friends who are not comfortable at this point receiving the vaccine or having their older family members receiving it as well. I am still unsure and uncertain where I stand or how I feel. I guess time will tell. When I think about the COVID-19 vaccines, I feel skeptical. Now, me personally, I was scared. Mainly due to the fact that I have a medical condition which makes me one of those people that would get the vaccine first. Only way I am taking this vaccine, honestly, is if I see at least three, probably four white people take it first, see how they react to it. And even then, I'm going to still be suspicious of it. So then I'm going to make sure that there's at least one black person that I hear from that they said took the vaccine. And if they are good, if they're still able to talk and move normally and not have died within the next week, I guess I'll take it. But I'm going to still be very cautious. You've seen the internet? It's insane. It's everybody is talking about don't get the vaccine. I tell my mom, don't get the vaccine. Hello, mom, don't get the vaccine. Pero por qué? I don't want to get the vaccine. I don't think this is safe. There are a lot of people who are scared of the side effects. However, according to headline, it is only pain at the injection site, chills, headache, and fever. Those are the most common symptoms. All of these symptoms are temporary and indicate the vaccine is doing its job. They typically clear up without a few days. Are COVID-19 vaccines safe? According to Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, COVID-19 vaccines are safe and effective. COVID-19 vaccines were evaluated in tens of thousands of participants in clinical trials. The vaccines met rigorous scientific standards for safety. Why wouldn't you want to get the COVID-19 vaccine? Thousands of people were dying from COVID every day. Now they finally came up with a vaccine to benefit us from getting COVID-19. According to the CDC.gov, it states that COVID-19 vaccine will help protect you by creating an antibody in your immune system to respond without having any experience of sickness. COVID-19 vaccine may keep you from getting seriously ill. Even if you do get the virus, getting the vaccination will also protect people around you. Good thing is, with every bit of bad news, there's always good news on the horizon. A vaccine has finally arrived. Although, now that it's finally being distributed, the only thing I feel is 
the excitement to get my life back to the way it was. To be honest, I think we all feel like that. I just want to go outside and not have to wear a mask. When my grandparents tried to receive the vaccine, my whole family was helping them get the vaccine, put them on a list. Due to everyone getting the vaccine when it came out, they weren't able to get it right away. We were all concerned because they do have their own health problems, so we wanted them to be safe. We all kept fighting for them to get the vaccine. We called all different types of numbers for them to receive it. I took them that day to get the vaccine. I was so happy for them. Thankfully, they also got their second shot not too long ago. So they are all up to date and are fine. Thank God, because I love my grandparents. They mean so much to me. Their safety always comes first. Therefore, we just have to be patient and it will happen just like it did for my grandparents. I believe that the COVID vaccine was a great step forward to fight this pandemic. After all that happened last year, it was just a call for action to take this vaccine. Because I'm not only protecting myself, but I'm protecting my family. I got an unexpected call. A lady told me that they had an open space for me in a vaccination site at my Buru. I was relieved and happy thinking that finally I was going to get my appointment. I am still waiting for my second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine to protect myself and my loved ones. I know that I made a good decision. Because of an article titled What to Expect After Getting a COVID-19 Vaccine on Gavi.org I now feel that I have better understanding of the vaccine's effect on my body and I now feel more confident to register to get vaccinated. Hi, my name is Louis, I'm from the Bronx, and I'm vaccinated. My name is Ayana and I'm getting the COVID vaccine. Eight minutes and 46 seconds of a horrifying act. 46-year-old George Floyd was subject to police brutality and killed through the inhumane action of three police officers, including Derek Chavon, who kneeled on his neck and other parts of his body for a long time that air circulation to Floyd was stopped. Immediately, protests broke out across the nation against the officers and police in general because of the brutality that has been faced by people of color in America for decades. When people started to take to the streets to protest the death of George Floyd, I felt optimistic. The optimism that I felt came from the fact that even with the global pandemic going on, people still showed their support for Black Lives Matter movement and made sure that their voices would be heard. Slowly but surely, justice will be served. And there will come a time where people shouldn't have to be punished or killed by officers because of the complexion of their skin. When people began to protest for the death of George Floyd, I instantly felt sadness and remorse. Not only did I feel for him, but also for his family and our community as a whole. We became more divided than ever on this day. To have your life taken in such a cruel way is so unfair for a human being. Seeing how our community came together to support his justice and his life was a powerful message and represented why Black Lives Matter. Unfortunately, it took such an incident to occur for people in our community to come together as one to get a point across. I truly hope the story of George Floyd is never forgotten. When people started taking to the streets to protest the death of George Floyd, I felt like I had gotten into a time machine and I was back in 1950s, but I wasn't back in 1950, I was in the year 2020. I couldn't believe some of the same things that were happening at this time were still going on till today. Like how the police can bring so much fear in so many homes. I know when we think of the police we should trust them, but I find it hard to trust them when you see the video of the death of George Floyd and others. It makes it hard to trust that they're there to help. When I think about all of this, it brings so much fear to me. Because I have kids, a son and a daughter. When people started to take the streets to protest the death of George Floyd, I felt outraged, sadness, and helplessness. I was outraged at how the police officers treated the protesters while they marched peacefully 
because I couldn't believe how the officers used chemical irritants like tear gas, pepper spray, and rubber bullets on the protesters. Those were things you use on violent crowds, not peaceful protesters. When people started to take to the streets to protest the death of George Floyd, I felt mad as hell. For how much longer? How many more black bodies have to fall to the ground in order for everybody to understand that there is a major problem with the law enforcement, with the government? Thoughts rattled in my mind about how people like me get killed for doing the simplest of tasks. Walking, minding our own business, or existing. If I could be real for a second, I'm the type of person that believes in the phrase, an eye for an eye. I know it's not a good saying to follow, but honestly, it's just how I feel. My anger goes from full-on rage to numbness. And now the only thing I can think is when will all this be over? I looked on my television and saw something out of an apocalyptic movie. There was smoke everywhere, people were yelling and shouting, and there was gunshots and gunfires and people died. I remember earlier that day that they showed Trump talking to the people, riling them up, and then this happened. The only thing Trump had said afterwards is, we love you, go home. My mom had said that if it was a bunch of black people, they would have shot without hesitation. And I had to agree with her. That day was sad, but it was also infuriating because it didn't need to happen. But I also feel like it opened up Congress's eyes to see what this man's followers could do and how dangerous they can be. When I saw Trump supporters break into the Capitol, I felt disgusted and embarrassed to be an American and see how these terrorists vandalized the Capitol. Especially when these Trump supporters spread on how much they love their country and make America great again. But hey, you can't expect more from those type of people. When the Trump supporters broke into the Capitol, it just screamed white privilege. Because how are those people able to enter a place that is top secret and is supposed to have top security? Why wasn't there the same amount of police officers or army troops surrounding the Capitol just like when it was the Black Lives Matter movement? Best believe if black people or people of color were to break into the capital, they would be called thugs, delinquents, looters, and many of them would have been dead or shot at. And let people just overtake and act like damn fools. At least make it look like you tried. And yes, I know. The previous president got a mouth on him and he says what's on his mind. But I mean, it's up to the people to do what's right. Really? We just gonna act like fools? We got this all over the world on the news, how Americans acting like damn animals? No. And we still got the same results? The other guy's the president, guys. Hello, wake up. January 6, 2021 was an extremely upsetting day in American society due to an act committed by hundreds of people who supported 45th president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. Individuals who opposed Trump and his entire presidential career expected that people were going to go crazy, yet they didn't expect it would result in his followers invading the U.S. Capitol building. When I saw Trump supporters break into the Capitol, I was in disbelief and angry. However, I was not shocked. I was perplexed at how they were able to go against all those guards and actually storm the Capitol without major and brute force being applied to them. The fact that they were able to even get inside of the building is puzzling within itself. It was a perfect representation of white privilege and privilege for those that support the same kind of agenda. Again, people have the choice to support who and what they want, but this was an act of terrorism. I just know that if it were nothing but people of color trying to do the same thing, we would have seen a lot of people dying at the hands of the guards and other officials. Heck, they probably wouldn't have even gotten to the stairs outside of the Capitol. When I saw Trump supporters break into the Capitol, I was shocked, but not surprised. I was shocked how far Trump supporters got into the Capitol building that the Capitol Police did not use any force to control the situation. Additionally, I was shocked 
that the government took so long to act on the riot at the Capitol, but when people were protesting peacefully for the Black Lives Matter movement, it took police and soldiers no time to use deadly force against the protesters. So if it was us black and brown people who would have caused the riot, they wouldn't have hesitated to kill us relentlessly. The most inspiring thing that happened to me during uh, the pandemic was um, my church giving back to the community. Um, I was tight on money and you know as a parent you just want to make it seem like you got everything together. One of the deacons from my church um, had gave me a call one day and asked if I can drive by the church. When I get there she tells me um, don't get off the car just pop the trunk and I can see in the rear view mirror that they put six bags of groceries in the trunk. But as I drove away, like I, I was so grateful and felt so blessed that um, once the unemployment kicked in, um, I donated to help out those also in need. I guess you could say the inspiration I really got out of this was to just take a moment every day to just be grateful for everything you have. Just enjoy the little things that make you happy. Because in the end, that's all life is really about. Being locked down has taught me to appreciate my freedom, to appreciate those around me more, and to value life. So that's one thing I learned was to focus on, you know, learning more about life, appreciating life more, and focus on what I really want to do and my passion after all of this passes by. Another thing that I learned um, this past year, um, especially during COVID-19, was the importance of financial stability. You know, learning how to manage our money, especially during COVID-19, I feel like it was an eye-opener for everyone to realize the meaning of learning how to manage your money and being financially stable in case any pandemic like this ever happens again. A lesson I learned this year was that mental health is very important. With the whole pandemic happening and being on lockdown, we really got to know ourselves and our family since we were with them 24-7. When this is all over, I'm still going to wear my mask because I'll still be paranoid. But after I get used to not wearing a mask anymore, I'm going to bring all my masks and go out every week with my friends and family like we used to. When all this is over, the things that I want to do is mainly just go to all the amusement parks that I had planned to go to last summer, but never went to because of COVID. When this is over, I'm going to spend as much time as I can outside. I'm going to enjoy all the time that I spend in my house, all the time that I wasted in my house doing nothing. And I feel like it will be good. And I also think that I will still be wearing the masks because, um, I don't know, if like I feel like I'm sick and I don't want other people to get sick, I think it would be a good idea to keep wearing masks for these kind of situations. But yes, that's pretty much it. When this is all over, I'm going to go to Coney Island in the summer. When this pandemic is over, ah! I'm gonna frame this mask, I'm gonna frame these gloves so it's a constant reminder that I'm gonna burn them. Like, I am done. Don't talk to me about Lysol. Don't talk to me about hand sanitizer. But Jesus Christ. My skin, I'm starting to look like a damn skeleton all ashy. And once this is over, we are going to celebrate every holiday. I don't care if the month don't have a holiday. I'm going to make up a holiday. Being on lockdown has taught me a lot. I'm learning to have more patience with them. I'm seeing on a daily basis what it's like to be with my kids 24 seven, not just on the weekends. Their meltdowns of not being able to communicate because they're frustrated on this lockdown like anybody else. This lockdown did it for us. So 
once this pandemic is done, hey, don't even try to contact me. Like, I might turn off my phone. A lesson I learned this past year was not to take freedom for granted. Because just in an instant, it was taken away. And we were not able to be free to do what we wanted, go where we wanted, and see who we wanted. Additionally, a lesson I learned this past year was to appreciate the time that I have with my family and friends. Because we're here today and gone tomorrow. A lesson I learned this past year was to appreciate the blessing to be alive because there were so many lives lost and it could have easily been me or a loved one who could have been gone. Lastly, a lesson I learned this past year is to be more kinder and more understanding because this pandemic has caused a lot of chaos, sadness, and instability to so many individuals' life. So if I could spread kindness to uplift others during this uncertainty, then it can bring some positive energy and hope to prevail. When this is all over, I'm going to continue to help people, especially the elderly in my community, because we need to be there for each other to overcome this pandemic and spread kindness to uplift this darkness. I'm going to take my mother, my aunt, my son, even my nieces out to eat so we can enjoy ourselves and celebrate the fact that we're alive and together because we could have easily lost one another. Lastly, when this is all over, I'm gonna dance, 